curious, what's behind, what's the logistics of getting traded? You got traded from, uh, from New York to LA. What, what happens? Well, first of all, I know nobody feels sorry for an athlete, and I don't, I'm not trying to get that from anybody, but it's brutal. It's, it uh, turns your world upside down. Uh, I think to a certain degree it's unfair, because um, I think most people are like Steve Eisman. We, we all grew up hoping that we're going to be on one team our entire careers and win Stanley Cups and, and everything's good, but that's just not the reality of it. So in our world, it was, uh, it was brutal. Donna was uh, about nine months pregnant with our second Megan, and uh, we were playing at home that night. I was with the Islanders, of course, and we're playing Detroit at home, and I'm having my pregame nap, and Donna wakes me up during the nap, and uh, she says, uh, hey, uh, I think this is serious. You have to get up. Our uh, lawyer called us and said, you're getting traded. So I was like, okay. So I get up and I call him, and he had from a really good source said, yeah, that's probably going to happen. So I was carpooling at Greg Gilbert that night to the game, a former Flames coach, and we're going, and I'm saying, telling him the story. And he's like, no, I don't think that's going to happen. Nobody's heard anything. And so I was the starting goaltender that night, which I, I have – Nothing bad to say about the Islanders organization, but that was an odd experience when you have nothing vested in the game right now anymore, right? Because I've now moved on. I've now put my head into playing for the Los Angeles Kings. So anyways, we play at home, and I was lousy. We got smoked like 5-1 or something. And uh, after the game, Al Arbor, whom I greatly admire, and he's like a second father to me, nobody had still told me that I was getting traded. And uh, he comes up to me after the game. We're flying to Buffalo for a game the next night. He says, uh, you're staying home. We're going to rest you. So oh. I knew. So all through the night, of course, it's a restless night. Nobody calls. And then first thing in the morning, I'm, uh, Bill Torrey calls me and says he wants to see me. So I go down there, and he tells me that I'm gone. And, and that's the player part of it. But the worst part was gone. She had to sell the house and just all the logistics. She's, like I said, eight months pregnant. It was just... That's the part that's really ugly. There's no, you can't get paid enough for that crap, yeah. right? Because when you're at that point, I had, because of the hockey world was different at that point, I wasn't there for the birth of Jessica because they didn't believe in that at the time. And now I'm a month out and thinking, am I ever going to have a chance to see Megan born? And luckily I was because we're in, uh, I was with LA, we go to Montreal, and Donna was going to be induced. Uh, this particular day, I fly from Montreal after, and uh, luckily, Megan came naturally, and it was all good. So the world kind of came back in our favor a little bit. But it's just, I really hate it. Yeah. I, even now, whenever we talk about trades or I see a guy that's been traded, I, I have a real soft spot for the guy. I think, you know, that's, he's not having enough time in his life, that's for sure. That's a tough time.